Hello, my name is Elliot and I'm with Trout Unlimited Canada and today I'm going to try to give you a better idea of what a day in the life of a native fish is like. You'll have to excuse my cat here who's going to be coming through the frame. But essentially I wanted to give people an idea of what fish are doing during their day and all the video that you're going to see today was recorded by me just by hand with a little camera like this GoPro here or the one that's taking the video. and. I'd really recommend that anyone who's interested in fish can definitely learn more about their lives just as I've been able to do. Um, some basic equipment is just a mask and if you're wanting to look at native trout, maybe a wetsuit because they like to live places that are very cold and possibly a pair of flippers because they like to live in really fast water. But essentially, you just really need a mask. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of a native fish. To many people, fish are cold and slimy creatures lurking beneath the surface of our lakes, streams, and oceans. Glassy eyed and lacking the cute and charismatic features of the mammals we know and love, they seem to be so separate from us. only at the end of a fishing line, on our dinner plate, or in an aquarium behind glass. We're all familiar with the singing robin, but who knows of the fathead minnow vocalizing at rival males. or of the romancing sucker gathering by the hundreds to spawn in tiny streams each spring. Or perhaps more relevant to this workshop, the tireless digging of the spawning trout, hiding her eggs in the safety of stream bed gravels. There really is so much to be seen and to be learned from fish, which, by the way, represent about half of all of the vertebrate species on Earth. While each species of fish features special adaptations to overcome their own unique trials and tribulations, for this workshop we're going to focus on our native salmonids, that is, our trout, char, whitefish, and grayling. And to keep things simple, we're often going to just refer to them as native trout. So what does a day in the life of a native trout look like? Perhaps the best way to understand the life of any species is to understand its needs. Much like ourselves, native trout need food, shelter, a place to raise their young, and obviously, water. For most people, food and shelter are probably the best known aspects of a fish's life. We imitate the food of our native salmonids and other fish with detailed flies and lures, and we use them for angling. We study a stretch of river with its pools, runs, riffles, woody debris, and other features, and we plan our next cast. The reward for this understanding is often that addictive feeling of a tug on the end of our line and the ensuing fight as we reel in our catch. Each species has its own food preferences and ways of finding that food. Take for instance this pool. 
Here you can see whitefish feeding on drifting invertebrates and a long-nosed sucker grazing on algae, using its specialized fleshy lips. Each fish goes about its day utilizing its own unique adaptations to satisfy its needs. Without shelter, you're sure to become food yourself. Much of a fish's day is spent balancing the need to find food and also to remain hidden from predators. Were you able to spot the tiny northern pike hiding near the surface? And it's not just predators that fish have to be aware of. Look at these tiny rainbow trout. They've barely begun their lives, but even they must compete for the best places to stay hidden and to find food. Shelter for them might be the eddy behind a small stone, while for a large bull trout, it could be a deep pool or a rock ledge. Whitefish begin their lives as tiny, shimmering young of year, feeding only on the smallest invertebrates drifting by in the current. They spend their days in the shallow tailouts of pools and runs, somehow mustering enough energy to hold firm in this strong current. As they grow, they can develop a specialized fleshy nose that is perfect for flipping rocks to snatch up stoneflies and other hiding invertebrates. They also develop strong muscles to hold in fast currents where other fish can't getting first dibs on drifting food. No longer needing to blend in among the gravel, they lose their par marks and become a beautiful silver. West Slope cutthroat trout and Athabasca rainbow trout begin their lives as small juveniles. Bearing their distinct par marks and black spotting, they blend in perfectly with stream bed gravels. Too small to venture into deeper water, they hide in the shallow river margins, feeding on small prey items. As they grow, they take up residence in larger pools and runs, no longer afraid of predators like the bull trout or burbot, and use their muscular body and fins to snap up floating and drifting food. They are masterful swimmers and can shift their position effortlessly, using very little energy to do so. Like this Athabasca rainbow trout, who flares out his fins and jaw in a threatening pose toward the camera, all while maintaining a forward position. Bull trout begin their journey in the frigid and unproductive waters of headwater spawning streams. They are perhaps the most cryptic of all the Salmonids, with snorkel surveys to document them often being done at night, where they can be spotted with flashlights, having left the safety of their hiding rocks and crevices. During the day, tucked away under stones, their distinct polka dot camouflage helps them stay hidden from sight. As bull trout grow, they develop a large mouth and head, lose their polka dot camouflage, and move out into larger, deeper habitats where they become an apex predator. Bull trout will snap up sick or weak fish and are often lurking under the veil of waterfalls and cascades where they can ambush unsuspecting prey. longer needing to feed on small drifting food, they can spend most of the daytime sitting on or near the bottom where they need to expend as little energy as possible. One of the common misconceptions about native trout is that because they can be easy to catch, they're not very smart. But imagine how much energy you need to live somewhere like this. You can't just let food pass you by, especially when you have energy intensive needs like spawning just on the horizon. Spawning takes place generally in the spring and in the fall. 
Athabasca rainbow trout, arctic grayling, and west slope cutthroat trout spawn during the springtime, while bull trout, mountain whitefish, and lake trout spawn in the fall. The eggs of fall spawning species develop slowly in the cool water over the course of months, and they hatch out in the early spring, while the eggs of spring spawners grow much faster in the warmer water, hatching out in spring or summer. The timing of all of these species ensures that newly hatched young can grow during the summer months when food is abundant and there is enough water to move throughout their habitat. Spawning female trout use their muscular bodies and tails to dig depressions in the stream bed. These nests are called reds. They deposit their eggs here, which are simultaneously fertilized by the male, and then move slightly upstream to sweep more gravels on top of these fertilized eggs. The small eggs will stay nestled in the gravel for weeks to months, depending on the species and the water temperature. Whitefish and grayling are broadcast spawners and distribute their eggs over cobbles and gravels where they settle among the cracks to be hidden away. Once the young hatch, it's time to begin their escape and start their life outside their gravel nurseries. With the clock ticking and having resorbed most or all of the nutrition provided to them by their eggs and yolk, food and shelter become critically important. And so begins another day in the life of a fish. Well, we've covered a lot, and yet there's still so much left unknown. What does a day in the life of a fish really look like? Well, I guess the short answer is it depends. It depends on the fish, but more than that, it depends on where that fish is in its life. The day of a bull trout might be spent skulking the blue depths of a deep and dark pool, while a growing whitefish might spend the day with its school, flipping rocks in search of food. sucker might spend the day grazing in the sun. Newly hatched fish seem at home in mere inches of water where someday they'll never fit. Schools of spawning dace swim beneath the lily pads in lakes far too warm for our native trout to survive in. So can we ever really know what a day in the life of a fish is like? Well, we can try. I encourage you all to take a dive, or perhaps a crawl, into the lives of fish and see for yourself the amazing things that they're doing beneath the water's surface. Then you'll see and know these fish for what they are, amazing and complicated animals. It's important to speak up for their protection, because they can't speak for themselves. And now more than ever, especially in the case of our native trout, they need all the help they can get. <laughs>